Hello, my name is Darren Thomas and I am the Director of Educational Research Techniques. In this particular video, we're going to be looking at Adaboost classification with Python. So let's see what we can learn. So Adaboost classification is used primarily when you're trying to have some sort of a ensemble learning approach. So what you're doing is you're making multiple models and you're trying to iterate and improve your model each time. And so we're focusing on classification. You make many models and then you have those models vote for the final uh, prediction for an individual case within your data set. That's what happens. If you're doing regression, you take all those models that you made and you calculate the average for individual uh, points in your data to figure out for a, a dependent variable that is, of course, uh, continuous. And so we're going to go through these four steps right here to learn how to do classification with Adaboost. So step one, you got to prepare your data. And then we're going to make a, a decision tree for the baseline. Adaboost is often uh, combined with decision trees. And you know sometimes people use random forest instead. Then we have to tune our hyperparameters first. And then we're going to set up our actual uh, Adaboost uh, inspired model, if you will. So. What we're going to be doing here is we're going to be trying to predict whether people have cancer or not based off of the um, independent variables in our model. So let's go ahead and load our the various modules. So in line number one, we have our Adaboost classifier. That's kind of the star of this particular video. Then right here, line number two, this is for making our decision tree, which is going to be our baseline. Line number three is for line number three and line seven and eight are for doing our, our grid search because since we have hyperparameters, we don't know what's the most appropriate value. So we got to do a grid search to determine that. And then in the middle here, lines four and six, we have NumPy and Pandas and line five is where our data comes from. So the actual data preparation is rather simple for this particular video. So all we got to do is just remove some uh, NAs, which you're not going to see. I just kind of put the code in right here and we're going to set up our independent variables in line number two and our dependent variables in line number three dependent variable excuse me so we're going to go ahead and run that and you get the output down here if you really want to see it now we're going to make our baseline tree model so with decision tree models you know they make only one model and so we're going to see okay what kind of value will, will we get if we just made the one model and of course you know from prior videos that there are strengths and weaknesses to using decision trees. So this code is really complicated. So let me see if I can walk you through this nice and slow. In line number one, we set up our cross-validation. We've talked about what cross-validation is in prior videos. We're doing a, a k fold equals 10. So k equals 10 here. Then in lines number two through five, we are adjusting our depth. So the depth is like how far down the decision tree grows, goes. So we're gonna have we're gonna go from a depth of one to a depth of ten. That's right here in line number two in, at the beginning of our for loop. And so then we're going to put this stuff right here inside line number three. And the real key part right here is right here. Max depth is gonna equal depth. And that comes from up here in line two. So the first time through is gonna be, be a one. The second time through is gonna be a, a depth of two. The third time through a depth of three, etc. And so next we say if tree classifier, if the, if the max depth is less than depth, we break. That means we, we kind of go back and start it over again. But when this number gets bigger than depth, so basically when we get to number 11, it'll you know, stop. And then, of course, it's going to calculate the, the mean of the accuracy. The key point right here is the accuracy. All right. And then it's going to print this out. So we're going to go ahead and run this. And so you can see when we have a depth of one, we got the best um, uh, max depth. And then after that, it kind of starts to decline. So that's what we can expect. Now we're going to do our actual hyperparameter tuning for the Adaboost model. So again, we don't know what to tune these to. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and paste this. Now for those of you who are really sharp, you know, you might say, hey, you know, in line number two, you are tuning the number of estimators and the learning rate. And those are the hyperparameters that 
Adaboost cannot set for itself. Adaboost can deal with max depth or whatever, or it can adjust those. And maybe we should have put in values for max depth as well, but we didn't in this example. Um, so first we start by initiating an instance of Adaboost classifier in line number one. Then like I just mentioned in line number two, we are setting up our grid here. So we have to give it values for the number of estimators and we have to give it values for the learning rate. Now what these things are, especially learning rate, is kind of like uh, how much each tree contributes to the overall results. That's kind of what the learning rate indicates. And then the number of estimators is like, you know, uh, the number of estimators like in like each break of the tree, I believe. And so then in line three, we set up our grid search using um, our parameter grid and everything. And we're, look, we're gonna base our, our recommendation on the accuracy. So we're gonna go ahead and run this and it's done. Nothing came out yet because we have to go to the next line. So now here is where you get your results. So you do the search.fit xy and then you of course put in your, you look for the best parameter scores. Now this takes a little bit of time. So to make things efficient, I already have the output right here in this particular screen. So if you look closely, you can see the output is that Adaboost recommends a learning rate of 0.01 and the number of estimators to be 1,000. If we do that, we will get an accuracy of 74.15%, which is about a 2% increase from what we are already getting. So now we will, of course, run this right here, and you can see the output already, so I don't need to repeat it again. If we set our hyperparameters right here inside our Adaboost classifier, you can see that right here. If we run these values, we get this particular output right here, 74.15. Again, that's exactly what we were expecting. And so now we are able to improve our model by about two and a half percent, if you will. And so again, it wasn't a major increase, but you know, depending on what your goals are, this could be highly significant. You know, if there's a particular cutoff point that you have to reach, or there's some sort of an expectation, these little adjustments can make a significant difference. So what we're gonna do now is, is we're gonna go back, review what we talked about and conclude this video. So what we did here is we started off learning about Adaboost, which is a form of ensemble learning in which you make multiple models and you try to improve the performance with each model and then you aggregate those results. In other words, when you're trying to make a prediction for a, a particular value or example, you take all of the models you made and for classification you vote what you want what you think that final prediction is going to be if it's regression you find the average for that individual value and so by doing that often you're able to improve your performance quite a bit and so of course we prepared our data first not a lot to mention there right here we made our decision tree and we made this decision tree because it was going to be like okay this is our standard everything in statistic is about comparison and so we need to have an idea of what we can expect so that we know how much we are able to improve the model. And so down here, we actually started tuning our hyperparameter right here. And so you can see those results right there. So we made many multiple models right there. And the computer, our Python, recommended a learning rate of 0.01 and number of estimators at 1,000. If we did that, we would get an output of 74% accuracy. Now, of course, we could put in more values for the estimators or more value for the, for the learning rate but then you know of course it takes longer and longer for the computer to you know calculate the results and so then we took those recommendations from the search grid and we put them into the actual Adaboost model and you can see we got the exact same scores so i hope that you were able to uh, understand what we talked about in this video my name is darren thomas i am the director of educational research techniques take care